welcome to this elite series of brass building blocks. My name is Tom Hutchinson and I'm principal cornet of Cory Band, cornet tutor at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama, a Besson artist and cornet tutor and past soloist with the National Youth Brass Band of Great Britain. In this class I'll be giving my thoughts on one of the key fundamentals of brass playing, how to produce a good sound. The quality of sound we produce is something that should always be maintained and developed. In order to do this, I consider there to be five categories to focus on. Taking a good breath, using the right air, keeping everything open, listening to others, and using the right equipment. Taking a good breath is essential to create a quality sound. If we don't breathe properly, then it's impossible to fill the instrument regardless of the dynamic or the range that we're playing in. Think about the speed of the breath that you take. If you take a quick breath, then you're more likely to exhale quickly too. But if you take a slower, relaxed breath, it's much easier to control a slower exhalation. This controlled and relaxed method of breathing will help avoid any sudden bursts of air down your instrument when playing quiet, lyrical music or using air attacks, providing greater support to enhance the overall quality of the sound. Try it the next time that you practice. Next, we need to ensure that we're using the right air. For me, this means using warm air, another essential element in creating a good sound. You can try this with me now. We're going to take either hand, place it in front of our mouth and blow air onto it as if we're cooling down a plate of hot food. The air should be fairly mild or lukewarm. Now let's try this again. But this time, imagine you're steaming up a mirror. Notice how much warmer the air is. Again, try this into your instrument the next time you practice, and you'll see that cold air will give you a cold sound, but warm air gives a much warmer sound. Keeping everything open will help us deliver this warm air. So when we play, we need to ensure that the aperture, throat and mouth cavity are all kept as open as possible to create a richer and fuller sound. You can experiment with this using different syllables. I tend to think of an O-shaped sound when I play, which keeps everything open for me. Conversely, I always avoid an R or E sound, as this tends to close up the throat, restricting both the amount and the quality of air that can pass through. In order to keep the aperture open, try to buzz as little as possible when playing, instead thinking more about the airflow and minimal vibration in the embouchure. I find that this helps me produce a much purer tone and allows for greater dynamic control in all ranges of the instrument. Listening to others is also really important in identifying what it is that makes a good sound. I've learned so much over the years from listening to cornet players of all generations and then picking up my cornet after to try and replicate their sound be it Richard Marshall, David Dawes or Phil Carr. Each have their own special qualities and it's really useful to know what the best players sound like on their instrument in order to strive and work towards the sound you want to create. Finally, it's important to consider the equipment that we use and how it might impact the sound. Generally speaking, if your mouthpiece is quite shallow or perhaps you're using a trumpet style cornet mouthpiece, then it's often difficult to create a bigger sound. The challenge, of course, is always to find a mouthpiece that produces a good sound, but also provides flexibility in all ranges. My motto is, if it ain't broken, then don't try and fix it. However, if you do feel moving on to a different mouthpiece, switching instruments or experimenting with other accessories could improve your sound, I'd recommend enlisting the help of family or friends to do a blind test and provide you with honest feedback. Sometimes it really is amazing what a difference the smallest of changes can make. But it's also important to remember that the first step towards a quality sound has to come from the player rather than the equipment. My final piece of advice after considering the five categories discussed is to allow time in your practice to listen to the sound that you're producing and assess whether it has the hallmarks of quality you want. And playing a simple slow melody can be the perfect vehicle 